Hi everyone, my name's Greg, and I work on the AMP project, uh, on, the on the caching project in within AMP. Um, and I'm, I'm here today with Zach Bloom from Cloudflare to tell you about signed exchanges. So it may have slipped your attention, but cached AMP pages are using a false ID of some sort. The cache delivers fantastic page performance, but to do so, it has to deliver AMP pages on the cache's own identity, not the original author's identity. When AMP pages are linked from Google Search, they use an AMP viewer. This AMP viewer helps us achieve pre-rendering and the fast delivery via Google's AMP cache. The downside, as you can see, is the URL bar shows google.com rather than newyorktimes.com or any other website that you'd want to show. So users prefer the correct URL, but this also has implications beyond just the URL bar. The browser works based on an origin model, and that origin model is affected by the domain that's shown in the, in the URL bar. So a, a big problem here is cookies. These make session analytics on and off the AMP cache difficult to unify. Uh, another one is course headers. Uh, course headers affect whether or not you can make re requests across domains, and these get harder as AMP caches are deployed. The list goes on. So why do we put up with this? What is this privacy-preserving preserving, pre-rendering preserving pre that we keep talking about? And it's hard to say. How does it work, and why does it create the URL situation that we're talking about today? So pre-rendering means that the page that you want to click on is already ready to display before you even click the link. So imagine I search for, I don't know, the AMP developer website. The result page looks something like this. In the background, the search page is instructing my browser to go ahead and fetch this page on amp.dev. It anticipates that I might want to click on it. So let's say I do. I want to learn something about this, this random interesting project. Let's see what happens when I click. In what I perceive as basically instant instantaneous, I have the document to read. This works in part because the document I clicked was already loaded and rendered before I even clicked on it. Let's say I didn't click that result. The privacy-preserving part of this is, means that Google didn't, uh, the pre-rendering step didn't reveal any private information about the user. The page that is loaded, loaded from Google's own cache, and any network events that would happen to another origin have been delayed. That includes heavy images and videos, uh, which will load shortly thereafter. In addition to protecting privacy, this also saves the user ba user's bandwidth if they don't actually click on the document. Only once the document has been loaded do those resources get fetched. Unfortunately, if the pre-render page has been loaded from the AMP cache, its URL is wrong. So we use a small origin attribution bar at the top to help the user. Let's quickly go over why this is the case. So TLS also known as HTTPS, requires a real-time connection between a user all the way to a server processing, uh, possessing keys for private keys for that domain name. The area covered by TLS in this diagram is a bit arbitrary. Why some servers and not all of them? The AMP cache can't provide that real-time TLS connection as it doesn't possess private keys for any domain names except Google.com. Therefore, the AMP cache URLs must be on Google.com. So this is a very simplified version of privacy-preserving pre-rendering. In order to preserve privacy, we have no choice but to load a document from Google server, the Google AMP cache. This provides a buffer between the user and the publisher until the user has chosen to click on a link and indicate that they're interested in that content. This set of constraints leads us to the URL problem that we started with at the very beginning of this talk. The question we have here is, can we achieve privacy-preserving instant preloading while fixing the URL identity problem at the same time? So the way we're going to do this is a new collection of browser technologies called web packaging. So we believe this can enable privacy-preserving prefetchers, prefetching, have trouble saying that, while displaying to the user the URL of the document author. In particular, we're interested in a web packaging technology called signed exchange. So signed exchanges 
provide digital proof that to the browser that a document delivered has not been notified from what the author intended. This allows a third-party cache, such as the AMP cache, to manage the delivery of the signed exchange. When a browser sees this digital signature, it can display the publisher's URL regardless of who delivered the file on the last network connection, be it a Wi-Fi router, the AMP cache, or the original server. The result is a navigation to the publisher's own URL while maintaining a privacy-preserving prefetch. So I want to go into a little bit of detail what's required in order to be able to implement signed exchanges on your own site. So the first thing is you'll need a new digital certificate for your domain name. If you've ever worked at TLS before, HTTPS, you've seen this, and this is a very familiar process. There's a few small differences. The new certificate requires a new extension called Can Signed HTTP Exchanges, which allows for use in signed exchanges. The certificates also can have a max of 90-day lifetime. The typical process involves providing proof to a certificate authority that you control the domain in question, upload a CSR, a certificate signing request, and receive a certificate file back from the authority. If you've ever done this before with TLS certificates, exactly the same process. Currently, the only certificate authority that I know of that's issuing these certificates is DigiCert. But as other certificates add support, you can search for Can Signed HTTP Exchanges certificate, and you should be able to find some more information. So, it's important that users are served regular web pages while AMP caches are served as signed exchange. As a result, your web server must be able to vary the content type based on the request headers in the HTTP request. This is how you're similar to how your web server would handle gzip, for instance. If your web browser doesn't understand how to unzip it, don't send gzip. If it does, you do. A very simple site demonstrating this can be found at amppackageexample.com. So this is a simplified example of a standard HTTP request and response pair. It probably looks very familiar. The only change when serving normal responses for signed exchanges is to add a very HTTP header. The very header here shows that we want that the browser, uh, that the website can vary based on the, these headers, except an AMP cache transform. The document itself is AMP as we know it. However, when a participating AMP cache crawler, such as Googlebot, visits, it will then send the HTTP request headers advertising that is capable of understanding a signed exchange. It does this via some new request headers. The first is a simple accept header that specifies, hey, I can accept an application signed exchange. The second is a new header called AMP cache transform that, that tells the server that the request is coming from the AMP cache, so a signed exchange is preferred over normal HTML. It also conveys some additional information that helps the AMP packager optimize the document it's serving. The server then responds with a new file, application signed exchange, as the content type. It's a binary format, so there's not much to see that's readable here. But the first three bytes will be SXG. In order to support signed exchanges with AMP, we have open sourced a web server. Uh, this implementation can uh, perform all the necessary transformation and signing that is necessary. It's called the AMP Packager. The AMP Packager is implemented in Go as a binary. You can run it on your own infrastructure today, and it can sign and package AMP documents. Let's look briefly at its deployment requirements. Expanding out the, the diagram for a few slides ago, the AMP Packager is a back-end web server component. It's designed to sit behind your own front-end reverse proxy. You would configure your server to send AMP cache requests to the Packager, and user requests would be uh, operating the same way. The AMP Packager, in turn, fetches the original AMP documents from your own backend, optimizes, and signs them. A few other things to mention. The AMP Packager needs regular updates, roughly every six weeks, and it will need to make infrequent outgoing internet connections to a certificate authority to update certs and so forth, as well as to cdnandproject.org to grab new CSS and JavaScript. There's additional news. Oh, sorry. At this point, I would like to uh, <laughs> introduce Jack Bloom from Cloudflare. Thank you. Sorry. Hello. He'll be back. So I work at Cloudflare, and Cloudflare is a CDN. It's also a global edge network. We sit in front of 15 million websites, and we help protect them from threats, and we help make them faster. 
We sit in front of so many websites that you've probably used Cloudflare today already without realizing it. When we heard about signed exchanges, this thing that I think Malta described yesterday as the solution to the single biggest problem with AMP, we started thinking. And what we wanted to think about was, is there a way that we can solve this problem without requiring people to do cryptography, without requiring people to provision certificates, do all these steps that aren't particularly easy? And the reason that's important is because we believe in the AMP vision, this idea that the web, it can't just be possible to build really great things on the web. It has to be easy. And it has to be accessible for everyone if we want the web to be great. So we started thinking, is there a way we can solve this really hard technical problem, not for one site or 10 sites or 100 sites, but for 15 million sites? And so what we came up with is, is what I'm going to show you right now. You can turn signed exchanges on your Cloudflare site right now. You can flip a switch, which you're going to look at right now. If you use Cloudflare, you're probably familiar with our dashboard. If you don't use Cloudflare, you will become very familiar with it. If you click the speed button that looks suspiciously similar to an AMP logo in an unintentional way, we were, we were first. You scroll down, and you find this lovely section called AMP Real URL, and then you turn it on. This is the end of the instructions. <laughs> And we will start doing this signature back and forth with Google whenever Google asks for an AMP copy of your domain. And your domain will start being served from Google search results on your actual website. Problem solved. We enabled this yesterday during Malta's talk. Over 2,000 people have already turned it on. So five times the number of people in this room have already enabled signed exchanges and, and, and are doing it hopefully close soon, in the very near future. So we would love for you to turn it on as well. Uh, we believe in the future of the internet, and we believe in AMP as a part of that, and we just really appreciate the opportunity to be a part of it. Thank you. Oh, and it's free. <laughs> so real quick, how would you test your site in whatever way you've set up signed exchanges? We're working on some adding better tooling in the future, but here's a few quick ways you can do it. First, check your browser. You need to be running the latest version of Chrome, 73 or later. It's currently a Chrome support only feature, but we hope other browsers will add support soon. Next, you can try fetching your page through the AMP project cache. You'll need to change this URL up here to match your own. Basically, replace dots with hyphens, and the path ends in your full URL without the protocol. If you open Chrome DevTools Network tab, you'll see something like this as this loads. It will show the resource being loaded from the AMP cache as a type signed exchange. This will be immediately followed by a request for a certificate with a type cert chain CBOR. Lastly, you can see the document is loaded once the certificate has been verified, but since this requires no additional network request, it's loaded from the signed exchange itself. Finally, you can test this on Google Search, just like what you would with your normal AMP pages. This can take a few days as you wait for Google indexing to pick up your changes. Once everything is in place, you'll see the page with your own URL. There's more documentation to be found, uh, including details about all of these steps that I talked about at amp.dev. Check it out. Thanks, everyone, for your time. Have a great conference.